Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning. Welcome to the 42nd lecture on economics, management and entrepreneurship. In our last lecture, we had seen how production is to be planned and controlled. In that, we had basically considered different functions of planning the functions namely where programming, scheduling, authorization, follow up and control. We had seen how different programming models can be formulated for static, dynamic, deterministic and stochastic demand cases. We had of course, taken only a few cases. In scheduling, we had considered different types of situations. If one or two machines, but more jobs or only one or two jobs and a large number of machines, how scheduling and sequencing are to be done. Then we had discussed why and how the production planning control department passes on the authority to different departments of the company to procure goods, to procure tools, jigs and fixtures, to start the operation, how it authorizes the operators to start the work and these are done with the help of root chart and other things. And then we had said that the work, the plan when it is implemented has to be overlooked by chasers who have to physically go and see the progress of the work. And if there is any difficulty, they have to report to the production planning and control department for corrective action. This complete cycle is called planning, making a plan, passing on the authority to other departments to execute the plan, following up finding out the shortfalls or discrepancies or deviations from the plan and taking corrective action is what is control. Now that we have considered production planning and control. Today, we shall discuss inventory control. To plan production, the most important thing is to get proper amount of material and have it in the store, so that when the production starts, the inventory is available in the stores and it can be requisitioned by the factory to start the production. Now, as production starts, inventory is requisitioned, the inventory level in the stores comes down. And therefore, there is a need to ask for replenishment. That means, the stores must place order with the supplier for a fresh supply, so that before the inventory comes down to zero, the supply takes place for replenishment. This is inventory control. Now, we shall study today 
and probably in the next lecture the topics on inventory control, what are the different considerations and what are the different approaches that have been taken in the past to control inventory. First of all, let us understand that having good amount of inventory is good in the sense that the production does not suffer, but there is lot of capital invested in the inventory when it is acquired and it becomes an idle resource and that is a cost. When lot of money is blocked in the form of inventory lying in the stores, it does not give any revenue at that time. Therefore, there is a potential loss of revenue to have a large amount of inventory. Therefore, a trade off must be made between having good amount of inventory, so that production does not suffer and as less an inventory as possible, so that idle capital is not idling. So, these are the considerations, principal considerations that is made that are made in inventory control. Now, a company may have a large number of materials. In that case, how to exercise selectively control on these items? It is humanly probably not possible to control the position of inventory of each and every item that the company maintains. So, selectively it can decide how to ex exercise control over different types of items. So, these are the things that we shall study today. So, the topic for today is inventory management. First, a general definition inventory is an idle resource that has an economic value. Now, this is a very general definition, it says that any resource if it is idle then and but it has a potential value then it is an inventory. In that sense not only materials lying idle in the stores is an inventory, but also human employees who are idling not contributing to the company is also an inventory. Machines that are not being put to use, but are idling is also an inventory. But in our lecture we shall concentrate on materials inventory. So, in manufacturing organizations it is the stock of items stored for future use which we shall consider as inventory for the purpose of our lecture. Now, why keep inventory? Principally there are four motives that guide keeping inventory. One is to decouple different operations in the soft floor. It synchronizes the inflow and the outflow. Say for example, a machine is to be used if it is fed with input material, then the outflow will automatically come out if every other thing remains same, but if the raw material is not available the outflow will be affected and if this outflow goes to another machine and if the outflow is not there the other machine is also affected. So, in such a case you can consider this suppose that this is a machine and this is another machine the outflow of this machine goes as inflow to another machine. Now, if we have an inventory here 
something like in process inventory within two processes. Then the processes these two processes are decoupled from each other it does not depend so much on this machine. If this machine is not functioning for any reason this machines activity or operation is not affected because it gets a supply from the in process inventory. So, this is the decoupling function of an inventory. Precautionary motive cushion against uncertainty and naturally the demand for let us say finished product customer demand may change it is not constant it varies if it varies and if one does not like to lose sales one must have sufficient inventory. So, that the demand even if it is uncertain is met from the in inventory there has to be sufficient amount of stock this is usually called buffer stock to guard against uncertainty in the variation of the demand. So, this is the precautionary motive. The third motive is the speculative motive. Speculative motive is basically hedging against non availability or high price in the future. So, one would like to store sufficient material so that in the future the price rise which is anticipated now will not affect the profitability of the company and in the future the company may anticipate a shortfall in the supply for which it would like to build up certain inventory at its store. Now, this is the speculative motive and of course, the fourth motive is completely economic. Economic motive means that the company may like to order in a lot instead of ordering only one item or two items at a time if it orders 10 items at a time then probably there are certain advantages associated. One advantage is the order preparation cost, the clerical processing cost, the mailing cost, the telephone costs. The other advantage could be that there could be a quantity discount given by the supplier. So, these benefits are obtained when the inventory when the order quantity is larger than one or two units only. So, this is purely an economic reason why more inventory is stocked at a point of time. So, these are the four different motives why inventory is kept. Now, there are different types of inventory we already know about raw material that is purchased from outside agency the vendors or the suppliers. Then we have just talked about in process inventory in process inventory sorry yes. In process inventory we already know between machines or between operations and materials and components being worked upon both constitute the in process inventory. Materials that are being worked upon and materials that are waiting for operations between two different machines these are in process inventory. The finished products inventory are ready to stock or ready to ship items and then finally, the components of parts and sub assemblies that are ready to go into the final assembly. So, there are different types of inventory. 
Now, to start with, we shall consider a case of multi item inventory management. As I said, a company may be procuring hundreds and thousands of items, different items, depending on the size of the company and the type of products and the variety of products that the company is manufacturing. Now, it is difficult to keep track of each and every item, although it is not impossible. So, usually one makes a selective inventory management or selective control of inventory of items. This is normally called ABC classification of inventory. Multi item inventory management ABC analysis. What is basically done here is that all these items that are stored in the in the company in the stores they are classified into three categories or classes A class, B class and C class items. This classification or categorization is made on the basis of annual cost of usage that is the cost annual cost of usage as defined by the unit cost of the item and the, the number of units used in that year. It is average values of course, average usage rate in a year multiplied by the unit cost. So, this is the consumption of the item on an average in a year. So, for all the items the annual cost of their usage is found out and then what is done arrange the items in decreasing order of their annual cost of usage. Now, for every item we have found out the annual cost of usage and then arrange them in the decreasing order the highest coming first and the lowest coming the last. Then we cumulate these costs and then define the cutoff cumulative annual cost of usage for each class. Often they are taken as 80 percent, 15 percent and 5 percent. You can see if 80 plus 15 is 95 plus 5 is 100 percent and group the items as belonging to A that caters to 80 percent of the cumulative annual cost of uses B class items to 80 plus 15 to 15 percent uh, annual cost of uses and C to 5 percent annual cost of uses and then plot the ABC curve showing percentage of total annual cost of uses versus the percent of number of items. Now, these steps we shall illustrate with the help of an example. Let us say I am sorry, let us say that we have 10 items although in practice there could be hundreds of items. So, we are assuming here that there are 10 items I 1, item 1, item 2, 3, 4, 5 etcetera item 10. And their annual usage this is average value average annual usage is or are given as uh, recorded as this 10, 30, 20, 40, 50, 20, 40, 60, 25 and 10 units per year and their cost unit cost rupees per unit is 20, 30, 80 etcetera. Now, if you multiply them you get the average annual cost of uses 10 into 20 is 200, 13 to 30 900, 20 into 80 1600 and finally, 10 into 40 400. So, first of all collect data for each item and then multiply them to find out the annual cost of uses. Now, the second step was 
arrange them in decreasing order of sequence. Now, here the highest is 4200 occurring for item number 8 followed by item number 5 followed by item number 3 etcetera and the last is I 1 that is what we have done here the last is I 1 200 is the annual cost of uses, but the I 8 has the highest annual cost of uses of 4200 followed by I 5 2000 etcetera. So, this we have arranged in decreasing order of the annual cost of uses. Next we cumulate or accumulate if when we accumulate 4200 is this this plus this becomes 6200 this plus this plus this is same as this plus this which is 7800 and then plus 1000 is 8800 etcetera it continues and the highest is to 12250. Now, if 12250 is 100 percent then how much percentage is 4200 it is close to one third 34 percent. So, similarly we have calculated corresponding to this it is about 50 50 percent 50.6, 63.6 etcetera. This is what I said if you take this final one as 100 percent then express this in terms of percentages. Now, you can see we had the, the management has had decided that A, B, C classes the cutoff values for the cumulative annual cost of uses would be 80 percent, 15 percent and 5 percent. So, 80 percent comes up to about this up to I 2. So, highest is this. So, highest item this item alone caters to 34 percent these two items together are responsible for 50.6 percent these three items together are responsible for 63.6 percent of the annual cost of usage. So, 80 percent meaning I 2 up to I 2 79.2 nearly 80 percent these five items are responsible for that. Then up to 95 80 plus 15 is 95 that means up to this these are B class items so, I 7, I 9 and I 10 and I 4 and I 1 are C class items that is what I have written down here. A class items are 8, 15, 13 and 16 of course, 12 could have been also included here because we have taken 80 percent if we take 70 percent then of course, 12 would not come. So, this is a management's decision as to whether it should take 80, 15 and 5 or 70, 20 and 10 or whatever. So, if it is 80 percent then I think 12 should have come here yes I think I would rather make the change here. Yes. So, because we have taken 80 percent then I 2 should also be included there. So, I, uh, I, I 2 I am sorry not 12, but I 2 yes I 2 should uh, be included in the A class items. So, when we plot it. So, we are now plotting percentage of total uses oh, we have taken here 70 percent 25 percent and 5 percent. So, I think what we should do we need to do what we need to do is de redefine them as 70 percent and uh, 25 percent 
and 5 percent. In that case, I 2 would come here. Yes, I 2 would come here. That means, our original thing was all right. Yes, now it is ok. So, what we have done basically that we have defined these figures as 70 percent, 25 percent and 5 percent. So, if you do that then only uh, only up to this it is coming. So, percentage of total usage is 70 percent, 95 percent and 100 percent and in this case how many percent number of items are responsible for 70 percent. So, here again I think I should uh, be more realistic in this case the 4 out of 10 items are responsible for nearly 70 percent. So, this value should not be 40 percent, but it should be something like uh, should not be 25, but it should be 40 percent. So, basically it is saying that these 4 items I 8, 5, 3 and I 6 out of 10 items are responsible for nearly 70 percent of the cost. This is shown here and these are A class items. Less number of items are responsible for a high percentage of the total usage and these items are B class items and these items are C class items and this is called normally a Pareto distribution of the items. Pareto is an economist who suggested that 20 percent of the population in a country are holding 80 percent of the total capital of the country. So, similar thing is happening here in inventory control. Here the ABC classification says that A class items are few. In this particular example 40 percent, but sometimes only 20 percent or 15 percent items constitute the A class items. Now, in this case we are saying that 40 percent of the items are responsible for 70 percent of the annual cost of usage. So, if so much of money is being used and invested in the A class items as understood by their uses, we should control the inventory of A class items more closely than we do it for B class items and for C class items we can be quite loose in controlling their inventory level. This is the basic idea that we are getting from this ABC analysis. Now, we can exercise different degrees of control. For A class items exert the tightest possible control, keep detailed records, do real time updating of the inventory level, go for accurate controls, regularly review and normally hold give large instead of giving large lot size go for small lot size. We will talk more about how to decide on the economic lot size, but more frequently you do review and therefore, you order for less number of items and uh, small buffer stock. Safety stock is normally small because you are ordering more frequently it is not necessary to have larger buffer stock or safety stock and closely follow up the inventory level. For B class items go for moderate control, go for batch updating rather than real time updating. The lot size need not be very small neither very high it can be medium, buffer stock can be moderate 
and do occasional follow up. For C class items, you may not even have any record, you can have a loose control, you can order large, large lot size you can ask for, you can keep large buffer stock and you can go for infrequent and visual review of physical inventory, because you are not keeping any record, you may not keep any record and therefore, you can only visually see the position of the inventory and place the order. So, you can see that selectively you have you are controlling. So, if you do more control you need more effort to be spent here for A class items, less for B class items and much less for C class items. Now, this classification <coughs> has been made on the basis of average annual cost of uses. But it is quite possible <coughs> that if a particular item is not available, then there is a large stock out cost. Now, such an item is a critical item. Now, possibility there is there is always a possibility to, to divide or classify the items in terms of the stock out cost or criticality of the items as expressed in the form of stock out cost. But what we have shown here is an ABC classification which is normally done not on the basis of stock out cost, but on the basis of average annual uses, average annual cost of uses. But as I said it is possible to also consider stock out cost along with the average annual cost of uses to make a classification and then selectively apply your controls. Now, that we know this let us go to deciding how to place order for replenishing stocks that will depend on the cost consideration. Now, different types of costs can exist one is the procurement cost. Procurement cost can be of two types one is independent of order quantity, it does not de depend on how much order you are placing and this these are clerical processing cost. You have to have a person to type or to word process the order. So, there is a time involved there is a person who has to spend half an hour or 15 minutes time for every order and in a day there can be 10 or 20 different types of order. So, it is just not a question of typing he has to also see the inventory position, he has to decide how much inventory to be replenished what should be the order quantity, the mailing has to be done, occasional telephoning and reminding has to be done and if it is a manufacturing situation that means, suppose that we are discussing about finished product inventory and the order is placed to the production department or to the factory soft floor to actually produce so much, then the production department has to make a setup and for every order there is a separate setting up of the machine that is required and there is a cost involved there. All this is not a function of how much we are ordering. So, this is one type of cost we are calling it k, k is a constant and there is procurement cost also depends on the order quantity. Order quantity inspecting stores for ordering and inspecting incoming material. Plus of course, the cost of the material is there, but in addition to that we, we will have to inspect whether the material that has come is up to the specification that we had asked. So, this is what also we have to inspect the stores for ordering and inspect the incoming material. So, this depends on the order quantity that we have we are ordering. So, suppose that it depends on this C is a constant proportionality constant. So, we can say that the procurement cost is equal to k plus 
C Q. C Q is the unit cost of the item. Q is the amount ordered. A second type of cost is the inventory holding cost. Now, here again there are two types of cases. One is the real out of pocket expenses. Holding inventory you have in a in a place for which rental has to be paid. A guard is to be there or somebody has to operate the inventory. So, personal cost, utilities, watchman, there may be some breakage or pilferage, you may pay insurance or tax, and there is a handling cost, material handling cost, taking the inventory from one place to another place, etcetera, putting it in the proper position. So, these are real out of pocket expenses. The other cost which is quite substantial is the loss in return due to capital held up in inventory. When certain amount is invested, certain money is invested in the inventory, the interest on that capital investment is a loss. So, that is an opportunity cost, it is not a real out of pocket expense. Normally, these costs are expressed in the form of what is known as inventory charge I rupees per unit time per rupees invested in inventory. So, if you can find out the how much of money we have put in that uh, amount, then how much is lost per year. Normal values vary from 12 percent to even 35 percent per year. Then we have a third type of cost which is called the stockhouse cost. If the demand is variable or if the supply lead time, the time the delivery time after we place the order is normally called the lead time. If the lead time is variable then there are two types of possibilities. One the order which we would have got we may not get at, at all. This is a case of lost sales in which case we are losing certain revenues and losing the goodwill of the customer. The other cost is that the customer is willing to wait and this customer order remains with the company as a back order or, or backlog. And if there is a delay then there is a loss of goodwill and because this is an additional operation certain other paperwork has also to be done. So, this also is a cost. Now, back order cost is normally given as rupees per unit back order per unit time whereas, lost sales one really is not very sure whether the lost sale is only an approximation, but people have even tried to relate it as rupees per unit lost per unit time. So, these are three different types of costs. Now, there are two cases or two situations. One is that the inventory or the demand for the item is independent of demand of for anything or of other items it is quite independent whereas, there is a case of dependent demand. Demand of one item is dependent on the demand for another item. So, we shall study both the cases to start with we are studying first of all the independent demand. Firstly, independent demand for items is influenced by factors external to the company such as retail demand or customer demand. Demand forecast is made for these cases. The dependent demand is influenced by factors within the company's control. Demand for sub assemblies, components and raw materials. Now, we are studying the case of inventory control, the case of independent demand and we will study both the situations 
deterministic model that means, where we are assuming the demand to be known and constant and the supply lead time is also known and constant on uh, and also we shall discuss case of models, where the demand is variable it follows a distribution and the lead time also is not constant it follows a distribution. So, to start with we are considering the first situation which is the case of independent demand with deterministic model that means, everything is constant. That is normally known as an economic order quantity model E O Q economic order quantity model. Here several assumptions are made first of course, is the that the demand is deterministic that it is continuous and that it is constant. Also assumed to start with is that as soon as we order we get the supply there is no delay the supply lead time is equal to 0. Later we shall relax this situation and we shall consider a constant lead time. Also we are considering one single item and we are considering that it is a multi period infinite horizon case. That means, we order and the material is received instantaneously and then it is depleted as and when it is taken off items are taken off for use and then again we order etcetera. So, this continues ad infinitum price of the item is constant the setup cost k k is the constant procurement cost k is constant and that no demand is lost or back order there is no stock out cost involved. This shows the situation in this case the x axis is the time and the y axis is the on hand inventory and the demand is rate is constant. Therefore, if initially we are holding an inventory of q and if the demand rate per day demand let us say is lambda then at that rate it falls the on hand inventory position falls because it is getting depleted at a rate of lambda per unit time. And at some point it goes to 0 the on hand inventory becomes 0 let this length be called capital T the cycle length because this continues when it comes to 0 we place a fresh order and because of the assumption of instantaneous supply q is immediately obtained the on hand inventory position immediately goes from 0 to q and then starts falling again because of the demand lambda. Now, this continues. So, we can see that q is nothing but lambda into t that is q that is what we have written here q is equal to lambda into t. Now, our interest is to find out what is the value of q which minimizes the inventory cost. Now, there are three types of inventory cost as we have seen the procurement cost, the inventory holding cost and the stock out cost. Now, in this case there is no stock out. So, we shall deal with only two types of cost procurement cost and inventory holding cost. Now, procurement cost if you recall is the fixed cost independent of the demand k plus the cost of the item into q k plus c q this is the procurement cost k is often called the setup cost plus the inventory holding cost. 
how do we calculate the inventory holding cost? We shall find out the average inventory level and the average inventory level is nothing but the area under this divided by T. The area of this is half Q T, Q is lambda T. So, from here we can find out that the average inventory level is nothing but Q by 2. So, Q by 2 is the average inventory held and it is held for how long? It is held for T periods. So, Q by T 2 into half or the average inventory held is nothing but the area under this curve which is half Q T, half Q T. So, half Q T is the average inventory level multiplied by the time for which it is held. This multiplied by this C is the, uh, the capital invested in the inventory during that cycle. C into Q by 2 into T is the amount of capital that is invested and blocked in the inventory during that cycle. And I is the I if you recall is inventory charge which is rupees per unit time per rupees invested in the inventory which is basically percentage per year. So, it is something like 12 percent per year or 35 per 30 up to 35 percent per year it can go. So, this amount of uh, capital invested into I is the inventory holding cost. So, total cost within a cycle or per cycle is K plus C Q which is the procurement cost plus the inventory holding cost I C Q by 2 into T. If I want to calculate total cost per year then I should divide by capital T t is the cycle length that will give me k by t plus c q by t q by t is nothing but lambda so c lambda plus half i c q by t is lambda into t and this can be written as k by t plus c lambda plus half i and c multiplied can be written as h defined as h into lambda into t. So, T c total cost per year contains t in the denominator and t here. If I take the first differentiation of total cost with respect to t, I get minus k by t square because there was a t in the denominator plus h by 2 lambda and if I put that equal to 0, I get a value of t that minimizes the total cost and that becomes equal to root over 2 k h lambda and q star then can be derived as lambda into t. Now, it is t star. So, q star is equal to lambda into t star which is equal to 2 lambda k by h root over. This is the lot size formula due to Wilson who first developed this and it is known as Wilson's lot size formula 2 lambda k by h root over. Now, this is the order quantity how much to order is basically q star given by the square root formula or the economic order quantity formula or Wilson's lot size formula 2 lambda k by h and when to order is very simple when the on hand inventory is 0. Now, look at the diagram when the on hand inventory is 0 place the order on hand inventory is 0 place the order 
that means that one has to always look at the inventory position as soon as a transaction occurs the inventory position must be recorded or updated and a decision made when it is 0 plus the order. Now, the next thing is that we have made an assumption that the supply lead time is 0 or that the supply is instantaneous. Now, this is not a very good assumption. We would like to now take a constant lead time, but before that we are plotting these costs along with uh, against Q. Now, you see the, the procurement cost and the inventory holding cost. The more amount of inventory we are holding, the more is the cost here and the procurement cost is it is total cost per year. Now, let us look at the picture. This is the total cost per year equation k by t plus c lambda plus 1 by 2 h lambda t. Now, lambda t is q. So, it is half h q. So, this portion is a straight line when rising straight line and k by t is basically k by t. So, 1 upon t is lambda by q. So, t comes here. Now, it is something like this if q is equal to lambda t then 1 by t is equal to lambda by q. Therefore, T c per year is equal to k by t plus c lambda plus half h lambda t and this can be written as 1 by t is this. So, k lambda by q plus c lambda this is procurement cost plus half h q this is inventory holding cost. Now, you can now see here you can this part is this part is c lambda and that is shown here this is c lambda which is constant and then this one k lambda by q is basically gives the shape such as this and this is the inventory holding cost because it is half h q directly proportional to q therefore, it rises from here to here. So, when these two costs are added we get the total cost per year you can see that this is at this point the total cost takes a minimum and that is the value of q star. The value of q at which the total cost takes a minimum is the economic order quantity and normally this curve is quite flat around this point. That means, if the q is changing if because it quite it is quite possible that some of our assumptions may not be correct in the sense that lambda may not be correct or that the uh, various things that we have taken is not correct then the actual q may vary a little from the q star that we have calculated. Even if this curve says this curve says that even if q changes a little bit to the left or to the right the total cost does not change much that is that it is insensitive the total cost per year is not very sensitive to the variation in the value of q star because of because uh, of any change in the value of uh, c or i or whatever we may have estimated. So, friends today we took up inventory control 
uh, we defined inventory, we said different types of inventories could exist, we gave motives why inventory is kept and then we consider a multi item situation and we say that it is possible to selectively control the items inventory by classifying them as A, B and C. We said that A class items have to be controlled with a lot of focus whereas, C class items such controls may not be necessary. By doing so, we are reducing our scope meaning that we are reducing our focus, we are concentrating more on certain a few items rather than a large number of items. And then we said that there are different types of costs, the three classifications of costs are the procurement cost, inventory holding cost and the stock out cost. The simplest situation is modeled at the end of the lecture and we said that it is possible to find out the order quantity under deterministic and known situations and that is given by a square root formula known as Wilson's lot size formula and there we have seen that the when to order is when the on hand inventory is 0 and how much to order is given by 2 lambda k by h root over. So, we stop here today and we will continue to discuss inventory management in the next lecture also. Thank you.